Hello everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. I am excited to guide you through some essential functions in Microsoft Excel. VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP and HEXLOOKUP. By the end of this tutorial, you will be equipped to handle various lookup tasks in Excel efficiently. And don't worry, if you are new to this concept, I will guide you through everything step by step. I have also included a downloadable Excel file with examples so you can practice along with me. Let's get started. Alright, let's begin with VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP stands for Vertical Lookup. Yes, Vertical Lookup. It allows you to search for a value in the first column of a table and return a value in the same row from a specified column. This function is particularly useful when you have a large list and need to find specific information quickly. Before we dive into using VLOOKUP, let's make sure our data is organized correctly. The value you want to look up should be in the leftmost column. This is crucial for VLOOKUP to work correctly. VLOOKUP searches for the lookup value in the first that is the leftmost column of the specified range and returns the value in the same role from a specified column. Here is an example of a table. The customer ID column is the leftmost column. Then customer name and customer address column are additional columns. When using VLOOKUP, you will look up or find the value in the customer ID column and get the corresponding information from the customer name or customer address columns. Sorting your data can help avoid errors and improve performance. Although it's not mandatory, but sorting your data can help VLOOKUP work more efficiently, especially when performing approximate matches. Sorted data ensures that the lookup process is more streamlined and accurate. So, to sort your data in Excel, select the data range you want to sort. Go to the data tab on the ribbon, click on sort A to Z for ascending order or Z to A for descending order. I will go with the ascending order sorting, so I will click on this one. The third thing is to convert your data range into an Excel table. Converting your data range into an Excel table makes managing and referencing data much easier. Tables automatically expand when you add new data and they make your formulas more readable. So to convert data to an Excel table, select the data range again, go to the insert tab on the ribbon and click on table. Make sure the create table dialog box has the correct range covered and click OK. Your data is now an Excel table, which makes it easier to work with VLOOKUP and other functions. To recap, in ensuring VLOOKUP works correctly, place the value you want to look up in the leftmost column. Have the data sorted for better performance and fewer errors and convert your data range into an Excel table for dynamic and easy to manage data. Now, let's imagine you have a list of customer IDs and names. You want to find the customer name based on their ID. Open the VLOOKUP exact match sheet in the practice file. To use VLOOKUP, click on cell F2, which is where you want the results to appear, and enter this formula. Here's the breakdown of the formula. E2 is the value you want to look up. This is the range of your table. 2 is the column number in the table from which to retrieve the value. And false indicates exact match. Let's press enter. The result is currently showing this error because we don't have any value imputed here. So if I have the customer ID 2 typed in here, the lookup result will show the customer's name corresponding to the ID in he2. Easy, right? Sometimes the value you're looking up might not exist in the table, resulting in an error. For instance, if I want to look up a value 7, which is not on the table, we will get this error. To make your sheets more user-friendly, you can use the if error function to display a custom message. So, let's have the VLOOKUP formula modified to include the if error formula and a custom message at the end. And press enter. Now this is what you have. 
If the customer ID doesn't exist, the cell will display not found instead of an error message. Isn't that neat? Not found instead of the error message. Next, let's talk about finding the closest match. Sometimes you might want to find the closest match rather than an exact one. For this, you set the last parameter to true, not false. To demonstrate this, open the VLOOKUP closest match sheet in the practice file and use this formula in the lookup result cell. Let's break this down. E2 is the value you want the closest match for. This is the input value you're searching for in the first column. This is the range to search within. This range includes both the column to search for the value and the column to return the results from. 2 is the column number to return the value from. Since B is the second column in the range, this parameter is set to 2. And true indicates finding the closest match. If an exact match is not found, VLOOKUP will return the next smallest value. For example, you want to find the discount for an order quantity of 250. So type 250 in cell E2 with the VLOOKUP formula in the cell where you want the results to appear. Press enter. We have 10. This formula searches for the closest match to 250 in the order quantity column. It finds 200 as the closest lower value and returns 10 as the discount. Now, let's switch gears and talk about HLOOKUP. HLOOKUP stands for Horizontal LOOKUP. It's similar to VLOOKUP, but it searches for values horizontally across rows. To demonstrate that, open the HLOOKUP example sheet in the practice file and have this formula in the LOOKUP results cell. Let's understand what the formula is doing. H3 is the value you want to find. This is the input value you're searching for in the first row, that is the product ID. This is the range to search within. It includes both the row to search for the value, that is the product ID, and the row to return the results from, the product's name. 2 is the row number to return the value from. Since 2 is the second row in the range, this parameter is 2. And false indicates finding an exact match. The function will only return a value if an exact match is found. So for example, you want to find the product name for the product ID 103. Type 103 in cell H3 and with the formula in cell I3, press enter. The formula searches for 103 in the product ID row it finds 103 in the third column and returns this result from the product name row. The formula will search for the value 103 within the first row of this range. The parameter 2 specifies that the value should be returned from the second row of the range. And the false parameter specifies that the formula should find an exact match. So if I replace 103 with 105, I should have gizmo indicated as a result. Now, moving on to the star of the show, XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP is more advanced and flexible. It can replace both VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP and offers more powerful features. It allows you to search for a value in a column or row and return a corresponding value from another column or row. Unlike VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP can search both horizontally and vertically, making it incredibly versatile. So open the XLOOKUP SIPU sheet in the practice file, click on the cell you want the results to appear, and enter the XLOOKUP formula. E2 is the value you want to look up. This is the input value you're searching for in the lookup array. This is the range to search vertically. It is the lookup array where XLOOKUP searches for the value. And this is the range you want the value from vertically. It is the return array where XLOOKUP retrieves the corresponding value. And finally, this is the message to display if no match is found. If XLOOKUP does not find a match, it will return not found instead of an error. Let's get an example for a vertical search. Say for example, you want to find the product name for order ID 3. 
With this formula entered in the cell where you want the results to appear, I will type 3 in cell E2. The formula will search for the value 3 within the range A2 to A6, returns the corresponding value from this range, and if there's no match, it will display not found. For horizontal search, XLOOKUP can also perform horizontal searches by specifying a horizontal range. If the lookup range and the return range are arranged in rows rather than columns, XLOOKUP can handle that too. Suppose you transpose the table so that the headers will be in cells A8 and A9. You can use VLOOKUP to search horizontally for a product ID and return the corresponding product. We're going to have the formula amended to cover the new range. So replace this A2 with A8 to F8 and this to A9 to F9. This way we have the new data range covered and press enter. So now the formula is covering the new range which is presented horizontally. And we still have morphine shown for the lookup value 3. If I change this to 5, it should change to pies. So again, E2 is the value you want to look up. This is the range to search horizontally from A8 to F8. This is the range to return the value from horizontally, which is the product value. Cell range A9 to F9. And this is the message to display if no match is found. One of the powerful features of XLOOKUP is that it can return multiple values from different columns. Open the XLOOKUP multiple sheets in the practice file. Let's say you want to return both the customer name and quantity. For example, let's say you want to find the product name and quantity for order ID 2. In cell E2, I will type 2 and enter this formula in the cell where you want the results to appear. Then press enter. The formula searches for 2 in the order ID column. It finds 2 in the second row and returns brownies and 20 from the product and quantity columns. Here is the breakdown of the formula. Again, the formula will search for the value 2 within the range A2 to A6, returns the corresponding value from these ranges, and if there's no match, it will display not found. XLOOKUP also supports wide cards to find partial matches. So open the XLOOKUP wildcard sheet in the practice file. Let's say you want to find the customer name whose name contains the substring Charlie. I will type Charlie in H2 and in the cell you want the results to appear, enter this formula. This formula will search through the customer name column for any name that contains Charlie. It finds Charlie chocolate and returns it in the result cell. Let's break down the formula. This formula transforms into Charlie, meaning it will match any text that contains the word Charlie. It searches through this range for any cell that matches Charlie, and if there's no match, it will display not found. The parameter 2 specifies that the formula should use wildcard matching. Finally, let's explore the search modes in XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP allows you to search from the top to bottom, bottom to top, or even perform binary searches. Open the XLOOKUP search mode sheet in the practice file to search from bottom to top. Let's say you want to find the last order date for the customer David. You're going to type David in cell E2 and enter this formula in the cell where you want the results to appear. Then press enter. This formula searches for David in the customer name column from the bottom to top. It finds David in the fourth row and returns this date from the other date column. If there's no match, it will display not found. The parameter zero specifies an exact match, while the parameter minus one specifies that the formula should search from bottom to top. All right, now it's time for you to practice. Let's start with the first exercise. We are going to find the name of an employee based on their ID. First, 
go to the exercise VLOOKUP exact sheet, click on cell F2 and type equals VLOOKUP. Excel will start suggesting options. Select VLOOKUP from the list by double clicking it. First, we need the value we are looking for, which will be in E2. So click on cell E2 and type a comma. Next, we specify the range that contains our data. This will be A2 to B6. So select the range A2 to B6 and type a comma. Now, we need to specify the column number that contains the value we want to return. In this case, it's the second column. So type 2 and then a comma. Finally, we need to specify whether we want an exact match. Remember, for an exact match, we type false. Close the parentheses and enter. Now, if you type 101 in cell E2, the result should be John Doe. And if you type 102, the result should be Jane Smith. So if any of these employee IDs is entered here, you will get the corresponding employee names based on the IDs provided in column A. Next, we will use VLOOKUP to find the closest match. This is useful for finding values that don't have an exact match. So, navigate to the next sheet. Exercise VLOOKUP closest sheet. Click on F2 and type equals VLOOKUP. Select VLOOKUP from the list by double-clicking it. The lookup value is E2. So click on cell E2 and type a comma. Next, the table range A2 to B6. So select the range A2 to B6 and type a comma. The column number for bonus is 2. So type 2 and a comma. This time, for the closest match, we're going to type true. You can see the options we have here. True is for approximate match or closest match and false is for exact match. Close the parentheses and press enter. So if you type 1, 2 in cell E2, the result should be 100 in cell F2. The closest match for 1, 2 is 1000, which is why we have the result of 100. And if you type 1750, the result should be 150. The closest match for 1750 is 1500, which is why we have the bonus result of 150 displayed in F2. This formula finds the closest lower value and returns the corresponding bonus. Now, let's switch to HLOOKUP, which searches for values horizontally. We will find the name of a product based on its ID. So, go to the exercise HLOOKUP sheet. In cell high 3, let's type the HLOOKUP formula. So, start with an equal sign and start typing HLOOKUP. Select HLOOKUP from the list by double-clicking it. We want our lookup value in cell H3. So click on cell H3 and type a comma. Next, the table range. Select the range A2 to F3. Type a comma. The row number we want to get a result from is 2. So type 2 and a comma. For an exact match, we type false. And don't forget to close the bracket. Then press enter. Now, if you type 202 in cell H3, the result should be pencil in cell high 3. And if you type 204, the result should be sharpener. The HLOOKUP function retrieves the product name based on their high days from the horizontal list. Next up, we will use XLOOKUP to return multiple values. This is a powerful function that can replace both VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. So, go to the exercise XLOOKUP multiple sheets. In cell F2, let's type the XLOOKUP formula. Start with an equal sign and start typing XLOOKUP. Select XLOOKUP from the list by double-clicking it. Our lookup value is going to be in cell E2. So, click on cell E2 and type a comma. Next, the lookup array A2 to A6. So, select the range A2 to A6 and type a comma. The return array is B2 to C6. So select the range B2 to C6 and type a comma. 
And finally, if no match is found, we want it to say not found. So type not found, close your bracket and press enter. We have not found shown now because we don't have any value indicated here. So if you type 6 in cell E2, the result should be T in cell F2 and 5 in cell G2. And if I have 6 replaced with 10, the result should be water in cell F2 and 25 in cell G2. XLOOKUP retrieves both the product name and the quantity from the given order ID. Now, let's see how XLOOKUP can be used with white cards to find partial matches. This is great for searching text within strings. So go to the exercise XLOOKUP white card sheets. In cell F2, let's type the XLOOKUP formula. Start with the equal sign and start typing XLOOKUP. Double click on XLOOKUP on the list to select it. First, we need to have the lookup value constructed with white cards. So type asterisk. Remember to have it enclosed with double colons. And type ampersand. Click on cell E2. Then type ampersand again and another asterisk. Then add a comma. Next, the lookup array A2 to A6. Select the range A2 to A6 and type comma. The return array is also A2 to A6. So select the range again and type a comma. If no match is found, we want it to say not found. So type not found, enclosed in a double colon and add another comma. Finally, we specify the match mode as two for white cards. So type two and close the parenthesis, then enter. So if you type white in cell E2, the result should be Walter White in F2. And if you have that replaced with Wall, the result should be William Wallace. XLOOKUP finds the first customer name containing the substring you typed. Finally, let's explore XLOOKUP's search modes. We will use it to find the last sale date for a specific amount. So go to the exercise XLOOKUP set sheet, click on cell F2, and start by typing equals and the hex lookup. First, our lookup value will be in cell E2. So click on cell E2 and type a comma. Next, the lookup array B2 to B6. So select the range B2 to B6 and type a comma. The return array is A2 to A6. So select that and type a comma. If no match is found, we want it to say not found. So type not found. Next, we specify an exact match with zero. So type zero and a comma. And finally, we specify the search mode as minus one. So search from bottom to top. We have the options listed here already by Excel. So double click on minus one, which says exact match or next smaller item. Close the parenthesis and press enter. So if you type 300 in cell E2, the results should give a corresponding date as we have it here. And if you have 300 replaced with say 500, you would also get the corresponding date for that. So XLOOKUP searches from the bottom to the top of the list to find the last occurrence of the specified amount. And there you have it. We have explored how to use VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP and XLOOKUP in various scenarios. Now that we have covered these essential functions, I hope you feel more confident in using them to manage and analyze your data efficiently. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more Excel tips and tutorials. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any updates. See you in the next one.